So in today's video, we are going to be trying out the InnoSub wall clock. We're going to be sublimating on it. So if you want to see how it turns out, just keep watching. If you're new to my channel, my name is Leslie. I do cricket, sublimation, and sewing videos. So if any of those things interest you, please consider subscribing, joining my YouTube family. And let's just get into talking about the specs of this wall. So this is a sublimation. It's an MDF wall clock. It's originally $9.15. It's on sale for $7.30 right now. So I'll have it linked down below for you. It's about 7.88 inches. And it has about a five millimeter thickness to it. It needs two AA batteries, which don't come with it. There is a template on their website for it. So you can use that to make your design. It only weighs about 5.8 ounces. So it comes like this. So you get the MDF part that you supplement on. It comes like this. It has a plastic film on it. So don't forget to take that off when you're going to sub on it. Um, and then the back just looks like this. Then it comes with the hands, the seconds hand, the hour and minutes hand and some washers and stuff and then it comes with this part so this part will go in the middle there and then you'll put your hands and stuff on there and this part also holds the battery so this is where you want to put your battery in um i think it only takes one double a we're going to be subbing on it and then putting it together so let's jump into kind of talking about how to Make your design for what we're going to need to sub on this is just going to be the wall clock itself. Um, we can put the attachments and everything to the side for now. Your sublimation design, make sure you make it a little bit bigger than your wall clock. Some heat tape and butcher paper. That's, that's pretty much it. There's not too much to it. Let's start off by taking off the plastic film. You want to make sure that that your plastic film is off. You don't want to sub on that. So just take it off. And then you just want to make sure that there's no dust and stuff. There shouldn't be because the film was there. But just in case you accidentally got dust on it, make sure that all that dust is off. So we're just going to wipe our paper Flip over our MDF, the white part should be on your, on your design. Just check it on every side to make sure that you have no white and that each side is covered. Each side of your thing has a design on it. So then you wanna just take your heat tape and you're gonna just tape it down to your paper. You're gonna to have to do it the long way and I would use a good amount of tape because you don't want it to shift on your way there, which can very much easily happen. So make sure before you like press it and all that, that you, and you might want to find your pressure before you even do the wall clock. Now that we have found our pressure and we put our tape, don't be afraid to use a lot of tape because this is very slippery and it's going to shift on you. You don't want it to shift. We're all good to go. Now we can take this to our heat press to sub on it. I'm excited to see how this is going to turn out. So for the wall clock, we're going to do 360 degrees for 45 seconds. And this is light pressure. So I have some butcher paper on the bottom to protect my heat press. Come off from the bottom right there from the rim around it. Make sure again that it's all lined up. You don't want it. You want to make sure that it hasn't shifted on you. Then you're going to flip it over with the paper facing up. You make sure we already fixed our pressure before putting it on here so we don't have to risk ghosting. And we're just going to press again at 360 for 45 seconds. Okay, so now you want to make sure you have some heat gloves. I'm just gonna put my hand down on one corner and I'm gonna lift it up. Oh, perfect. Just to make sure that it went through and then you can just lift up the rest of your paper. Perfect. So this is what my ink release looks like. 
I'm using Inosa paper, by the way. So I don't need a butcher paper. I forgot to say that earlier. I don't need a butcher paper on top with this one because it doesn't bleed through. You can see. Can't even see the design through it. So now you just want to take off all your tape and just let it cool down for a little bit because it is kind of hot. Okay, so now we're going to put our wall clock together. There's some pictures on their website that kind of show you what it's supposed to look like. So let's see. I don't think there's a video explaining um, what it looks like, what you're, how you're supposed to put it together. There might be one on their YouTube channel, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to take out all my pieces carefully, making sure I don't lose anything. So this part goes through the back. Like that. You want this part towards the top. So like that. And then we have that. And it looks like we have this gold washer first. Um, I think I'm missing a piece already. Okay. So we have the gold washer. Then we have this washer. It doesn't, I don't know where this is supposed to go. Underneath the gold washer. I really don't know. So we're going to turn this over. Just going to turn it that and that's just going to hold this part in place. Again, you want to make sure this part is facing up. And then I don't know where this part goes. I wonder if this was supposed to go like maybe this goes on the back. Hold on. This might go back here. There's nothing that really shows it, but I think it might go back there. And then the gold washer and then this gold washer. So then I think after that, you can just put your short hand. It looks like your short hand and then your long hand. I think you just gotta turn these. Okay, you just push it down it seems. Your long hand goes on top. You just push that down. And then this second hand has a little, a little point in there that goes into this middle hole. And then that just secures everything. So I would put that black rubber washer between the battery component and the back of the clock. And then the gold washer, the skinny one that's round. And then the other gold washer just tighten it and then you press the small hand and then the top hand. You'll notice the um, minutes hand is smaller, like the whole of it is smaller. So that one goes on top because the way it's built is that that part that kind of screws on, it gets smaller as it goes to the top. And then this just secures it all. How cute is that? This would make a great Christmas gift. I personally love sentimental gifts so i think it turned out so so cute i think it's so cute it subbed really well this right here is not because of um i don't know if you can see that it's not because of the subbing that's how the because it was like a picture taken of a picture you know and there's a little bit of like glare from like the it was in a photo album so that's what it is but it subbed really well. I have no complaints. It's so good. It's much easier to put together than I thought it was going to be. You know there were no instructions. I still need to put a battery in it. But it is so cool. And this little thing back here allows you to turn the... To kind of program it. So you can do the time. My only thing is, maybe I'll see if my husband can tighten this washer a bit more because this just all moves really easily um, and I don't want it to do that. So I'm going to see if my husband can tighten the washer with a wrench or something like that. Again, this will make a really cute gift. You can use it as a Christmas gift, Father's Day, Mother's Day. I love personal gifts. I love, I just think they're such, I don't know, I just, I love personal gifts. I love Gifts with photos, memories, things like that. So I'll have this link down below for you. 
and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you test it out because I definitely think I'm going to be buying some more of these because I just, I don't know, I really like them. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video.